All right, so we've just added our bacterial culture, the mesophilic starter, and now we're gonna add the lipase. And this takes about an eighth of a teaspoon for every two gallons. So we want a little bit more than half a teaspoon. And we'll mix that in. You can also add it to a small amount of water, but I find it works just fine this way. All right. And then we will wait 45 minutes. So if you're concerned about uh, using raw milk and making this kind of fresh cheese, that's definitely a concern to think about. Um, there's a small amount of raw milk in the country that can be uh, contaminated with pathogens. I've been making cheese for probably close to 10 years now on a small scale in my home and I've never gotten sick from any of the cheese that I've made. Uh, I do try to follow basic sanitary processes and I think that the dairy that I get the uh, milk directly from it also has very good sanitation practices and I'm pretty much getting the milk straight out of the cow. You know it used to be that uh, conditions were just not very sanitary and so they developed pasteurization because um, a lot of people were getting sick because of poor sanitary conditions and there are operations in this country that sell raw milk products such as cheese and um, they just have to make sure that their processes are more sanitary to be able to deal with raw milk. Some of the regulations have to do with the fact that to make cheese on an industrial scale and ship dairy products on an industrial scale, you know, they want to use the equipment that allows them to process and transfer the, the milk more efficiently. And in doing that, they're setting themselves up for these hazards that can only be addressed through pasteurizing the milk once it gets where it's going. Obviously, you saw me getting the milk directly from the tank at the dairy. I'm bringing it here and I'm pretty much making the cheese out of it right away. So I'm sure that has something to do with, um, you know, they're not being as much of a hazard. All right, so next step is rennet. So we're just gonna spoon out a certain amount of rennet. And for this amount, it's two, or it's uh, an eighth of a teaspoon for every two gallons. Five eighths of a teaspoon. A little bit more than half of a teaspoon. And it's not a big deal if you add a little more than you need. And then we mix this with some filtered water over here. So this is our rennet and water solution. And we'll just pour that in. Okay, so then we stir up the rennet. And though the FDA does um, say that there's no nutritional difference between uh, raw milk and pasteurized milk, you can take that with a grain of salt because they seem to be a government agency that's pretty heavily influenced by corporations. There's definitely a difference between the two and uh, as far as people in France know that uh, cheeses made from unpasteurized milk are far superior in flavor you kind of have to think that there's got to be a difference there because if you heat something up to that temperature, it's going to change in some way chemically. Um, and if you kill all the bacteria and the natural uh, bacteria that are in, in, it, in it, it's going to change the, the eventual result, the eventual product in some way. All right, so now we got to check it for break of the curd. Seems like it might need a little bit longer because it's not really firm enough. Okay, let's try it again. It's a little firmer now. Okay, so we're getting a pretty clean break there. And then we'll just cut curds.
is an old stainless steel ruler that I'm repurposing for cutting cheese curds. So after cutting the curds, we'll just let them settle for a little bit and they'll start to separate from the whey. And then we will scoop them into a bag and hang them and let them drain until they turn into a solid mass of feta cheese. All right, well, next time we're going to be finishing up this series on making feta cheese. So if you want to check that out, subscribe to my channel and uh, give a thumbs up to the video. And thanks for watching.